What's up guys? Today we are talking about, I'm pretty sure you already know, clusters. So to start things off, we are going to be looking uh, at our CPUs inside of our machine. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because Node.js, since it's single threaded, uses only one processor. All right. Only one because it's single threaded. Well, we're going to be taking advantage of all. I have personally eight processors in my machine. I'm pretty sure you should have eight or lower or more. It doesn't matter, but we're going to be taking advantage of those processors. All right. So every time we run an application, um, like a single website or a single, just a single application on node, it actually runs on one processor and we're going to be taking advantage of all of my uh, eight of them. All right. So we're going to be looking at our CPUs, how many CPUs we have, and we could do that by getting the, the module OS. So I'm just const. CPUs, no, CPUs, it's going to equal require OS, we're going to get it from the module OS, and we're going to get the CPUs from that, CPUs, control save, I'm going to just log out CPUs, so that way we could actually see how many CPUs we actually have. So in here, I'm gonna run it. So CPU, I mean CD, node, cluster, and it looks like I have eight CPUs running on my machine. Yeah, like I said. So since we're talking about clusters, uh, let me explain real quick what a cluster is. It's basically just a group of node instances. So you have your master, your master instance, and then you got your worker instances. All right. Since we have eight right here, one of these is going to be a master and the other, the other uh, seven are going to be workers. So now we're going to take a look at our cluster module. So require it's going to, cl it's called cluster and we're going to, we're going to check if the cluster, if that cluster is the, if one of them is a master, so cluster. dot is master is master and if it is then we're going to just log out this is the master process and we're going to spit out the process id as well so that way we can see which id it is so process process dot pid I'm gonna just copy this because else obviously if, if it's not the master then it's going to be the worker so this is the worker process and we're gonna also see the process ID for those so let me go back in here save this first So we got, this is a master process ID. Oh, that's because, sorry. Yeah, obviously. Uh, we didn't fork anything. So that's why there's no workers because we're not creating any workers. So we do need to create some workers. So cluster dot fork. And this is how we actually create instances. I'm gonna do this three times. Control, oh, no. Control save this. Now let's try it. And as you can see right here, we do have our master process, which runs on the ID 4912. And then we got our worker. They're all different. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, okay, what, what, now that we have this, what can we do with this? Well, now we're going to actually create our server and I will explain what we can do with this later on. But for now, we're going to do a for loop, a simple for loop. And we're going to just create a for loop. The reason why, because we're going to loop through all this. We're going to create however many CPUs we have. We're going to create uh, forks for those. So for let 
i equals zero i no zero i cannot type today i is less than i'm actually changed that cpus up there so i'm gonna say num cpus and then i plus plus don't worry i will change that right now and then we're going to just create a cluster or a fork of this so a fork just like so and up here i'm going to change this to number of cpus and we're going to grab the length of it now we are going to need to create a server so we're going to have to get the module http so require HTTP and down on the else we want to do is create a server so HTTP dot create server and there are typical rec res so rec res and down below we're going to be listening on port 3000 now up here we're going to create a message so const message is going to equal it's going to be the same thing as right here let me grab this copy I'm just use ticks for this though. I'm just say worker right here. So worker, and then we get the the ID of that worker. We're also going to be creating, oh, that, we're done. That's, that's it. And we're going to be logging this out. Sorry. We're going to be logging this out. And then we're also need to respond to the request that he just made. So res dot end. We're going to just end the, uh, and we're going to end with message. <clears throat> just like that. Now let's go back in here and restart this. HTTP control save all right now that you see right here we got our master process running on 14664 now let's go inside of our already did this once but let's go again another one we're gonna go to localhost 3000 and we get right down here ignore all this. this is not the error it's up here <laughs> it's down here i mean we get our worker 9 to 12 but if i keep on refreshing this as you see down here you see that it never changes the id never changes it never changes the reason why is because we don't have enough traffic going onto our site for this okay so in here i'm going to be creating or actually downloading an npm module called load tester and this is gonna simulate traffic going into my uh my uh what's it called local local host 3000 my site there you go we're gonna we're gonna simulate traffic going to this site so load test dash g because we want to install it globally i now i am going to start my um cluster.js and in another terminal command prompt I'm going to do load test dash n and we're going to send out 500 requests. Okay. 500 requests to HTTP colon port slash four slash local host colon 3000. All right. Well, it didn't do anything. <laughs> Oh, yeah. it didn't do anything um i'm laughing because well 500 is a little bit too too
too little traffic to actually change processes but if it was more traffic and i don't want to make the, i don't want to extend this video of you just looking at my screen of me creating generating traffic but if there was more than 500 you could actually test this on your own just download the code and test it if there's more than 500 uh traffic coming to my site you will see over here that our worker process id will start changing it'll start dividing the traffic into those uh workers and that's the whole point of creating cluster forks or forks is to split the traffic if just in case we do get a lot of traffic we're splitting the traffic between these process ids these workers so-called okay and that's all i'm going to say for now for about clusters in the in the next video we're going to be talking about how to architect zero downtime that's actually a term and that just means that every time a worker dies we'll just create another worker and that's ba it your site will never go down let me tell you that much it will never go down unless there's an error in your code then and you don't have a way to fix it or you don't have a um, a try clat a try catch block or something that catches that error without messing up the server then it will never go down but that's the end of this video guys i hope you enjoyed it um please consider subscribing like or dislike and please leave a, a comment down below on what you think about this thank you